Looking to hook your listeners with fresh and exciting new synth sounds? Well, sometimes the keys to music's future lie in its past, which is why today we're going to be looking at additive synthesis, one of the earliest forms of synthesis ever discovered. Hi there. Drew Swisher here with Musician on a Mission, and today I'm going to be showing you the basics of additive synthesis. And just to be clear, if you're already really familiar with additive and you're looking for more advanced techniques, this video is probably not going to be very helpful for you. But if you're new to synthesis or you're new to additive, this video is going to give you all the fundamentals you need to know to get started with making cool synth sounds. But before we get started, I want to tell you about our mixing cheat sheets. So we've got Tons of cheat sheets that we've made over the course of years that'll help mixers and engineers and producers know how to get the right sounds. And included in that is a synthesizer cheat sheet, which I created. And it's got a lot of things you can look at at a glance to help you get your synth sound pushed in the right direction for what you're going for. So if that sounds cool to you, go ahead and check the link in the description and uh, you'll get all those cheat sheets. So first things first, what is additive synthesis anyways? Well, it all starts with the humble sine wave. And as you can see and hear, sine waves are very simple sounds. It's the simplest sound out there. It's just one single frequency. Every single other sound you encounter out in the world has tons of additional harmonics on top of that. So while a sine wave only has the one fundamental frequency, everything else, including my voice that you're hearing right now, have that fundamental frequency and tons of other ones on top of that. So, for example, let's check out a saw wave. A saw wave has a fundamental frequency as well, but tons of additional, quieter harmonics on top of it. And these harmonics are what give a saw wave its characteristic tone. So what does this have to do with additive, though? Well, with additive synthesis, you're stacking multiple sine waves on top of each other to recreate a more complex sound. So we could recreate a saw wave using sine waves if we add the correct number of harmonics at the correct volume levels. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And I'm using Logic Pro and Alchemy to do this, but it doesn't really matter if you're using a different program. There are tons of great additive synthesizers out there, so if you're using something else, chances are you'll be able to do everything I show you today. And first things first, we need to initialize the preset. This is basically erasing all of the information that was previously on the synthesizer. That way we can start from scratch. And then what we're gonna do is go in here and set it to additive. So now we're using additive synthesis. And let me just uh, set things so that you're only going to hear a single sine wave. So that sine wave is pretty quiet right now, but trust me, you're gonna be glad that I turned that volume down here in a second. So right now we've got our sine wave, and how do we turn this into a saw? Well, we need to add the harmonics on top, and there are a number of ways to do this, but the easiest one is to just increase the number of partials. Partials is another word for harmonics. So these are the partial harmonics that are added on top of the fundamental frequency. And as I add more, you're going to see and hear the additional harmonies adding on top. So now we've got something a lot sharper, a little bit closer to a saw wave, but it's not quite there yet. Now, one way we could do this is by looking up the mathematical intervals and volume levels of every harmonic in a saw wave and manually enter those. But there's an easier way to do this in most additive synths. Here in Alchemy, that's just to turn on this harmonic section. And right now, I can just choose saw and it's going to automatically recreate the harmonics needed to create a saw wave. So in just a matter of seconds, we've recreated a saw wave. And just to be clear, we are not just using an audio sound of a saw wave. We have used additive synthesis to stack sine waves on top of each other to create the sound of a saw wave. 
And from here, we can make all kinds of interesting changes to the sound to make it sound cooler. So, for example, we could morph between the odd and even harmonics. So if we wanted it to sound hollower, we could make it really emphasize those odd harmonics. Or we could make it brighter and sharper by emphasizing the even ones. We could change the timbre with this tone knob, which is going to change how loud these harmonics are. And we can add all kinds of other interesting effects as well. For example, we've got beating, which detunes all of the harmonics and creates literally a beating effect. Or we could use stretch, which stretches the tuning up of the harmonics. Or we can stretch them down. And of course, from there, you're going to want to change things like the uh, ADSR, the amplitude envelope. You know, if you wanted to turn this into a pad, you could do something like this. Add in LFO modulation. And if these words are new to you, check out my synth basics video. I cover all of the fundamentals of using synthesizers to begin with. And that video will get you up to speed on how to use all of these other effects I'm talking about right now. So needless to say, using additive, we can create interesting sounds just out of basic sine waves. So there we go. We've recreated a saw wave from scratch, and then we've mangled it with cool effects to turn it into something more interesting. But of course, this isn't super useful by itself, right? If you wanted a saw wave, you just pull one up to begin with, right? But the important thing is this shows we can use additive synthesis to recreate sounds, and it goes way beyond basic waveforms. So what good is additive if it's highly theoretical and requires a ton of work to actually create something realistic. And why recreate a sound with additive synthesis in the first place? Wouldn't it be easier to just use the original sound? Well, these are all good questions that point to what, in my opinion, is additive's real strength right now. And that's that additive synthesis is great for creating slightly digitized versions of organic sounds. And you don't have to spend hours drawing in harmonics to do so. Many additive synths will let you import a sample and then the synth will automatically recreate it using additive synthesis. So for example, here in Alchemy, I can click on the oscillator right here. And right now, obviously it's set to being an additive oscillator, but I can say I want to import an audio file. So I just click on that, and now I can upload whatever I want into Alchemy. And I've already actually got a loop picked out, which I uh, got off sounds.com. And just to be clear, they're not sponsoring this video or anything. You know, they're not paying me to advertise for them. Just being clear that that's where I got it from, you know, credit where it's due. So let's check out how that loop sounds. All right, cool. And let's drop it into Alchemy now. All right, and we can preview it. Right now, it's set to spectral as the analysis mode, and we need to change it to additive. And we are basically telling Alchemy that we want it to use additive synthesis to re- create this file. Mapping wise, we're setting it to pitch. We could choose between pitch and drum. This is a piano. Uh, it's very focused on the pitches. So we're going to use that. And let's go ahead and select import. So now it is automatically resampling that sound. And the longer the file is, the more complex it is, the longer it's going to take. And also the more artifacts that are going to be in there. When you use additive synthesis to recreate a sound, you're going to get digital artifacts in there. But that doesn't really bother me when I'm doing this because that's usually the point. I'm experimenting with the sound and seeing what other possibilities I can find with it. And uh, a lot of the times, 
people suggest using shorter, you know, one shots rather than long loops when doing additive synthesis because those shorter files are going to have fewer artifacts. But like I said, for me personally, I tend to like those digital artifacts, so I'm just embracing it and seeing what comes up. All right, cool. Alchemy is done resynthesizing the loop, so let's check out how it sounds. All right, that sounds pretty cool to me. I, I don't know if you agree, but to me, that sounds awesome. It's noticeably the same loop, but it's just got all these weird extra little sounds going on in the background, which I really like. And from here, we can mangle this sound and change it in all kinds of different ways. So for example, we could change the speed, we could slow it down if we wanted to. Or we could speed it up a bunch. We can change the number of harmonics that we're adding on top of this. Which kind of works like a filter. We can even change it so that instead of recreating the sound with sine waves, we're using something else. So for example, let's check it out with square waves. And uh, this might be kind of loud, so let me go ahead and turn this down first so I don't hurt your ears. All right, let's see how this sounds. So that's got a cool bit crushed kind of vibe. Let's check out if we used a triangle wave. So like a slightly sharper version of that sine sound, but I actually liked how the sine sounded. So I'm just gonna go back to that. And of course, we're only using one of the oscillators here. So this has all been just using one single oscillator. Here in Alchemy, we have four. Your additive synth may have even more than that. So I could add in a saw wave here if I wanted to. And you know, it could be cool to uh, maybe add a sequencer here and create a bit of a bass line going on under this. In fact, let me go ahead and do that right now. All right, cool. So I've gone ahead and done what I just said, and let me just show you what I did. So I uh, loaded in a sound called Noisy Hum, and I used a uh, tuned sequencer to make it sound like this. <laughs> And my apologies, I know the uh, the tuning of the notes on this noisy hum aren't perfect. But, you know, for the sake of time, uh, I just want to show you that you can do this, not necessarily create a perfect track. Mm, you know, it's kind of drowning out that loop, so let's turn that off. And, you know, maybe let's add another lower sound on top of that. So I've added a couple saw waves below that, uh, and I'm using an LFO to make them pulse. So here's how that sounds. And once again, if uh, everything I'm saying right now is confusing for you, check out my Synth Basics video. I cover the fundamentals of synthesizers themselves there, which includes LFOs, filters. So, you know, if what I'm saying right now doesn't make sense, uh, check that out and that should help you. And these are just a few of the options of how we could morph this synth from here. You know, we could resynthesize a whole other sound, or you know, I could use a, a sample of some rushing water or something to give these piano chords a natural feel in addition to the digitized sound. All this is to say, you can get some really interesting effects this way. So if you're going for a more glitchy sound, you may want to intentionally run your sounds through this resampling process. <laughs> 
And if you're using Alchemy, you've got some other resampling options as well. You know, if you wanted to resynthesize this instead of as additive as granular or just straight up as a sampler, then those are also options. And to dig into granular synthesis or sampling, those would be whole other videos in and of themselves, so we're gonna leave it there for now. But just know that you have multiple options when it comes to changing sounds and making them new and exciting. So those are the basics of using additive. Basically, what you need to know coming away from this video is that additive synthesis at its core is about stacking waveforms on top of each other to create new sounds. And using additive synthesis, you can resynthesize other sounds. In other words, recreate another sound using these waveforms. And this is a way that you can add interesting digital artifacts on top of these sounds and make them a little bit more exciting. And as you can imagine, we've only scratched the surface here. Additive can get very, very complicated. But in my personal experience, these basics are often all I personally have needed to create sounds that I've liked. And if you're looking for where to go next from here, like I said, I've got that Synth Basics video, but I've also got a cheat sheet I'm really proud of. So like I said earlier, we've got all of our mixing cheat sheets, which we've made over the course of years to help producers get the kind of sounds they want from home. And included in there is my synth cheat sheet, which has all kinds of helpful stuff like ADSR curves for the most common synth sounds out there, uh, the most common synth waveforms, and how you can use them to get the right kind of tone. So if you want something that you can just look at at a glance and quickly push your synth sound in the right direction, go ahead and check that out. The link is in the description. All right, that's all I've got for you today. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I'm Drew Swisher with Musician on a Mission, and remember, create regardless. 